The pastor is dead from a poisonous snake bite, the tenth time he'd been bitten and the tenth and final time that he refused medical treatment. He's one of a community of Christians who say vipers are as vital to their services as the Bible itself. Tonight, we revisit ABC's Juju Chang's encounter with Pastor Jamie Coots, where he discussed religion, risks, and even how he'd want to die. This was Pastor Jamie Coots three months ago, doing what his father and grandfather did before him in this tiny church in rural Kentucky. Risking his life to praise the Lord with poisonous snakes. I know it's life or death every day. I realize that. I, I choose that. I believe this is what the Bible means. Coots and his followers believe they are called by God to handle venomous serpents. It comes from a passage from the Bible, which they take literally. They will pick up serpents, and if they drink any deadly poison, it will not hurt them. By the time we met him, Coots had himself sustained nine separate snake bites. A rattlesnake bit me here, a rattlesnake here. Including on his middle finger, each time refusing medical treatment in a demonstration of his faith. It was the most pain I guess I've ever felt in my life during the time that it was rotten and I knew something was going on, I just didn't know what for the first month. That much of the bone was exposed before it broke off. That's crazy. Not so much as a Advil? No. Not so much as a aspirin. No. Why keep it? My wife told me when this broke off in the yard, she said, I want to keep this. I said, why? She said, I want to keep that. I said, why? She said, I'll always have a piece of you no matter where you go. In another small church of fervent believers, we saw the pastors lay hands in healing prayer and dance to the collective adrenaline. Pastor Andrew Hamlin appears almost possessed by the Holy Spirit as he handles poisonous snakes. I am in the United States of America, and I have a constitutional right as a, you know, at my right mind adult, that if I believe so strongly that the Spirit of God moves on me to take up serpents, that I should have my constitutional right to do it. But local authorities see the snakes as a reckless, dangerous menace to public safety that's already taken lives and will take others. He admitted that he had snakes and took us to the church and our officers went in, picked the snakes up out of his uh, snake room. Last November, the state of Tennessee seized 50 poisonous snakes from Pastor Andrew Hamblin and cited him for illegally possessing them. The list just goes on and on for qualifications that you have to meet to possess these species. How on earth is handling a snake a religious expression? Uh, just the same way, uh, to me, taking up serpents in our religious ceremonies is just like uh, the Catholic who use wine in their communion on Sundays. If people has their, their right to do things that maybe I don't agree with and maybe I don't uphold, I'm not going to judge them. Well, I read about Using snakes during services is a long-standing tradition, one that took root here more than a century ago. So this is quite a collection of photos. Yeah, this is pictures we've taken, had taken down through the years. Uh, this one here, his dad, it was probably in 1991, 92, maybe somewhere along in there. This is a black timber atlas. <laughs> It's estimated that 125 churches use poisonous snakes during services in the U.S., many clustered in the South. Both preachers offered a rare glimpse inside this extreme branch of the Pentecostal tradition for the Nat Geo show Snake Salvation. Oh, Lord, we believe you, Lord, good Lamb of God, is a Lord of moon. The Tennessee law banning ownership was passed back in 1947 after five worshipers were killed over the course of two years. Pastor Coots even had a parishioner die in 1995 after refusing anti-venom following a bite from a timber rattlesnake during service. No charges were ever filed in Kentucky. If someone gets bit in my church and they're not immediate family, I will call 911, have the paramedics come out, and let that person tell them I don't want medical attention. So you don't think you're taking the Bible out of context or too literally? No, ma'am. Not at all. I mean, I mean, to me, that's what God taught us 
or taught me to be right. I mean, I'm not telling people to go out here and handle snakes. To me, a cult is somebody that stands up and says, if you don't do this, you're hell bound and you're not a part of us. Are you a cult? No, we're not a cult. We're Christians. If you've got a husband or wife, you... We're just like any other Christian on the face of this earth. Do you see yourself handling snakes in the future? Honey, I see myself as long as there's breath in my body taking up serpents. If they're lying, cheat, steal it, fornicate. Yeah. Coot says Drink. they live by a stricter moral code than most. The Holy Ghost ain't there no more. And if their way of life, along with the way they choose to worship, sets them apart, they believe it brings them closer to God. It's an inner peace. You don't think about nothing else. You have a love for everybody. There, there's no ill feelings, no nothing in your mind except, you know, God has honored me to let me feel His Spirit. Some people feel that that is the presence of God, and some people think it is a biochemical reaction that your body is having to fear, to danger, to life and death situations. If the Bible told me to jump out of an airplane, I would. Last Saturday night, in a scene much like this one, the rattlesnake Pastor Jamie Coots was handling turned on him, biting him on the hand. I was just standing there, and I seen him get bit, and he dropped the snakes, and he picked them back up. Cody Coots, the pastor's son, then brought his stricken father home. When paramedics arrived, they examined Coots and pleaded with him to receive medical treatment, but the family declined. Everybody that knows Mr. Coots knows what his, his belief is in this, and he had no intention of going to the hospital, and, and he, they did, in fact, refuse treatment. If he lived and woke up in a hospital, he'd have blamed every one of us, because now he was a firm believer he would not go to the hospital. He always told me, you get bit, you either die at home or God brings you through. Pastor Jamie Coots lost his life, but held strong to his faith. If this is the way God means for me to die, fine. Let me say I don't wish to die of a snake bite because it's excruciating pain, it's suffering, and it causes persecution to be brought upon the church. But I had rather die by a snake bite at home with people praying.